Indeed, today we continue pondering the Trinity. God in three persons, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. We've been looking at the way St. Augustine described the Holy Trinity. The one who loves, the lover. The one who is loved, the beloved. And love itself. Love. Indeed, God is all about relationships. The one triune God was present at the very beginning. At at creation, God began to create, and a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. And in the opening to John's Gospel, we read that in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And then the word became flesh and lived among us. In the beginning in the creation story, it was on the sixth day that God said, let us make humans in our image according to our likeness. The lover, the beloved, and love itself. One God in three persons. Let us pray. Holy triune God, we don't fully understand what it means that you are one God in three persons, but we are curious. We want to know more. We have questions. Help us to listen. Help us to be attentive to your presence, to your love, to your encouragement. May we see the depths of your heart and know more of you by the power of your Holy Spirit. Amen. Now, I don't know if you know this, but a bit of Bible trivia for you. The word Trinity is not in the Bible. But in John chapter 14, all three persons of the Trinity are represented So let us listen for God's word to us this day in John chapter 14, verses 15 through 21 and 25 through 26. Jesus was speaking to the disciples when he said, If you love me, keep my commands. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to help you and be with you forever, the Spirit of truth. The world cannot accept him because it neither sees him nor knows him. But you know him, for he lives with you and will be in you. I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. Before long, the world will not see me anymore, but you will see me. Because I live, you also will live. On that day, you will realize that I am in my Father, and you are in me, and I am in you. Whoever has my commands and keeps them is the one who loves me. The one who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I too will love them and show myself to them. All of this I have spoken while still with you, but the Advocate The Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and will remind you of everything I have said to you. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. For the last three years or so, we have been in a frozen stage at our house. I'm not talking about a lack of heat in the winter or even that we are stuck in one place. I am referring to the lovely ladies from the Disney movies known as Elsa and Anna. When my oldest was two, she fell in love with Frozen, and now it's my youngest who is two who is in awe of Elsa and Anna. He sings the music almost in a trance, and it speaks to his young soul. Lately, he's been singing the song, Into the Unknown, but it sounds a bit different when he says it. So I've listened close, and what I hear every single time is, 
It's to be known. It's to be known. And it causes me to stop and wonder. If the answer is it's to be known, what is the question that I should be asking? What do you want most in life? It's to be known. What's the best part of a relationship? It's to be known. Why do you go to church? It's to be known. Why do you pray to God? It's to be known. Why does God continue to offer love and grace to us humans even when we mess everything up? It's to be known. What do you want from a relationship with God? It's to be known. Listening to people over the years has taught me we all want to be known. We want to be loved and noticed and heard and accepted. And we want to know that we belong just as we are. David Brooks is a columnist for the New York Times, a writer for The Atlantic, and a regular on PBS NewsHour. And he spoke this last week in Dallas on the occasion of the National Day of Prayer. David Brooks wrote a whole book called How to Know a Person. And he writes, there is one skill that lies at the heart of any healthy person, family, school, community organization, or society. The ability to see someone else deeply and make them feel seen. To accurately know another person. To let them feel valued, heard, and understood. It's to be known. We want to be known and we want to know God. But talking about the Trinity can feel a bit like going into the unknown. In my experience with faithful Christian churchgoers, more often than not, they are able to talk openly and freely about God the Father and God the Son. But then when it comes to the Holy Spirit, well, who or what is the Holy Spirit? We talk less about the Spirit than we talk about God or Jesus. In the Bible, the Holy Spirit comes in the form of a dove and in tongues of fire and in the wind. But it always feels stuck behind a curtain and full of mystery. In our scripture from John 14, Jesus is speaking to the disciples in what we call the farewell discourse. Jesus has come to know the disciples, and it's clear that bonds of deep love and trust and respect have formed. There is a special relationship among them, and so the disciples seem uncertain when Jesus begins talking to them about what is to come next. Here, the disciples are lounging around their dinner table, their bellies full from their meal, their feet clean, and their hearts on fire as they listen to Jesus talk. Just a bit ago, Jesus had gotten up from the table during that meal and had washed their feet. It was a bit confusing, their Lord and teacher becoming their servant, but Jesus had insisted this is the way. This is what it means to keep God's commandments. Jesus began to talk about being betrayed by one of them at that table. And then he dismissed Judas from the table. Jesus gave them a new commandment to love one another as he had loved them. In that moment, Simon Peter senses something is not quite right about this night, and so he asks Jesus, where are you going? In his response, Jesus tells Peter that Peter himself will deny Jesus three times. I imagine Jesus pausing to take a deep breath. 
how does he explain to these that he loves what is about to happen? How does he share the depth of his love for them? How can he assure them that he knows them, that he won't abandon them, even though it is about to seem that way? Do not let your hearts be troubled, Jesus begins. And he talks about going to prepare a place for the disciples. The disciples have so many questions. Thomas, we don't know where you are going. How can we know the way? Philip, can you show us the Father to satisfy us? Jesus says, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. And God the Father will give you another advocate to be with you forever. I will not leave you orphaned, Jesus promised. I will always be with you. The spirit of truth will be with you. The spirit abides with you. Jesus said, the world will no longer see me, but you will see me. The Father and I will come to you and make our home with you. The Advocate, the Holy Spirit, will come to you and will teach you everything and remind you of all that I have said to you. If we know love, then we know God. If we have seen love in action, then we know Jesus. If we have felt or experienced love, then we know the Holy Spirit. To know, see, and feel love itself is to know the triune God. Lover, beloved, love itself. It still feels mysterious, this God who is three in one. How do we see and know and feel God? The Holy Spirit invites us into the same love that the Father and Son share. It is an invitation to a perfect love, to a place where we are fully known and loved deeply. When we see, feel, and know love, then we can be that love in the world around us. If love itself abides in you, then love becomes who you are, and you become an extension of God's love in this world. You have the power to share God's love, to see other people, and to help them be known. It's to be known. But the truth is, in this life, we don't always feel known or seen or loved. In 1992, Red Hot Chili Peppers came out with a song written by Anthony Kiedis called Under the Bridge. And I can remember back to my high school and college years singing this song and rocking out to this song, and I'm telling you, I had no idea what the words meant. But thanks to Dr. Brian Page, I did some research and learned that Under the Bridge is a lonesome ballad that acts as a love letter from Kiedis to his city and the comfort that it could bring as he fought for sobriety after a debilitating addiction to heroin. Anthony Kiedis said this about writing the song, I got one of those bursts of loneliness. And I didn't really feel like there was a single soul in the universe that I could connect with on a gut level, on a heart level, on a spiritual level, on a level of love. I just felt like I was all by myself. I just started singing to myself on the Hollywood freeway and an entire song came into my head. The crux of the song, he said, is based on loneliness. Kiedis refers to the lowest point in his life when all of his relationships with family and friends were broken except for one friendship he had with someone who was in the mafia and a fellow drug user. He said during that time, 
everything that was beautiful and precious and sacred to me took a back seat to drugs. In the song, Kedis begs, take me to the place I love. He said this, the place I love is where I am now. He'd been clean for three years when he shared this. He was once again in a place where he could see the beautiful and precious and sacred parts of the world. And he could be a creator of more love in the world. The Holy Spirit, love itself, knows you and draws you into a deeper relationship with God, to a place where you are not only known, but you are loved wholly and completely, a place where you too can be love in this world, where you too can be a creator of more love, where you too can be an advocate. What does it mean to be love in this world? What does it mean to be an advocate? Well, first, an advocate has to know the person or people they're advocating for. An advocate has to be curious, to ask questions, and to listen. 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 And then an advocate shows up and speaks up when necessary. An advocate works for more love in the world. An advocate draws attention to places where love is needed. An advocate makes something known so that it might be transformed by being known. It's to be known. It's hard to ignore something when you know more. When you've heard someone's experience and their pain and their real true feelings, it's harder then to turn your back and walk away. The love that lives inside you stops you and says, wait, we need to listen. We need more love in this place. I believe the Holy Spirit is calling us to pay attention, to advocate for the vulnerable, to advocate for our children so they may live free from gun violence, to advocate for members of the LGBTQIA community so they may live without fear, to advocate for open dialogue so that we may listen deeply to one another and build bridges and larger tables. To advocate for unity that we might know every single one of God's children has a place at this very table. To advocate for community that we might create space where people know they belong and where they feel known and even to advocate for people of faith and people of no faith to engage together in the public square. It's to be known. The irony for me in all of this is that the Holy Spirit remains a bit mysterious. She's wisdom, he's an advocate, they're our sustainer, the Holy Spirit is love itself. But we cannot catch the Spirit and trap her and study her. The Holy Spirit is on the move. What happens if we dare to follow the movement of the Holy Spirit? Well, honestly, we might feel a bit like Queen Elsa who sings... I'm afraid of what I'm risking if I follow you into the unknown. Where are you going? Don't leave me alone. How do I follow you into the unknown? Well, follow love. Follow signs of love and community, and there I believe you will find the Holy Spirit who is ready to love you to show you how to love more deeply and to be with you 
as you love others and God and yourself. In the name of God, the lover, the beloved, and love itself. Amen.